Yeah, I I think it's really amazing just how podcasts have grown so much. Apparently, just really in the past couple of years, how I, I think I read an article somewhere. I think it was somewhere on Facebook or like on Forbes, something like that. And it was like by twenty thirty, it's going to be a six billion dollar industry. Like oh, it's going to yeah. be a huge, huge thing, you know. And it's really interesting how there's a lot of now. I think there's five million different types of podcasts out there. Like just there's so much stuff out there just to learn or to be entertained. And I was actually looking up like what was the highest rated thing is like, you know, personal growth is one of them. And the second is health actually. Yeah. That people actually listen to. And third one was actually like crime, like, you know, like those crime <laughs> stories. Crime, I was, right. Yeah. I was just like, that's so <laughs> random, but you know, it's just really personal funny to me. Growth, health, cr- crime mysteries. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I was just like, wow, that's, that's, that's so funny. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And, and I think that with starting a podcast, knowing that the market could be so saturated, you feel like, well, what do I have to offer? There's already so much out there, but nobody is you. Like, yeah. that's what I've, that's what I've learned is like, there is nobody out there that approaches my targeted demographic the way that I do. Right. We all work in a symbiotic relationship. We're all there to help people, but the way that we do it, it's all different. Right. Yeah. And same with personal growth or same with, you know, true crime and investigative journalism. Right. All of those things like there is no us and it, we can't let our fears or our doubts or our room to grow <laughs> and learn. It can't hold us back. A lot of people I graduated with over like 500 people and I know of 10 you know, I mean, in gra- we gra- we graduated in 2013, but I know of 10 and 11 years that are still coaching. And a lot of them were just like, they they were too scared to really take the leap. Mm. And, or they didn't, or they just kept waiting for perfection to the point that they just couldn't continue down that journey. And it just really broke my heart because they had so much to offer. Yeah. And, and, and their voice is silenced. Now. Yeah. It's interesting because like, I talk to a, a lot of people about just being a coach. Like I have a f- couple of friends of mine who are actually our coaches. One of them I just had on the podcast, uh, who's a sales coach for businesses. He actually helps businesses in dealing with like helping them figure out what's going on, like what's wrong, why aren't you growing, why aren't you making sales? You know, he deals mostly in solar, but it's interesting how you mentioned how like a lot of people just sort of give up. You know, like they're they just sort of starting. Like no one really knows who they are, but then they 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 find it still too difficult and they just kind of drop it completely because it's just it's just so hard. So it's it's really interesting that you bring that up. Yeah, and I think it. I mean, it is hard. It's hard yeah. to know all the things that you need to know, yeah. right? But that's where like I, my. I still have my old blogs up. They don't get a lot of traffic, but it it, like, I love to look back and be like, oh my gosh, I really need to rewrite this. For one, I know so much more about the topic, but two, I could explain it so much better, right? But it's also a reminder of you just start where you start. And like, I started a blog and then I learned about SEO and then I learned about titling and then I learned about the programs that show you what people are Googling and the terms that you're using and you know, and then I learned how to use headers, right? I didn't use headers uh, in like yeah. my first like year of yeah. writing blogs, right? Or how to use a newsletter, right? Like I was just like, I'm just gonna do it and I'm gonna do what I think. And you you grow, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people just are not willing to be bad at right. things. Right. And you know, over the years, you know, when I, I starting the podcast, because I'd already been teaching workshops, I'm like, I'm just going to do a podcast like I teach. Mm. And that was really fun for me. So I still I had some background to build from. Most people do. Right. Like, you're not going to be like, I'm going to start a crew time mystery novel thing, but I've never researched true crime in my life. Like, no, you're going to talk about something that, you know, Right. So it may not be as perfect as it will be three years from now. And you might have lots of, you know, filler words or you might um, not do video. I'm actually, I don't do video and I'm like, okay, Marion, you really got to start doing video, <laughs> right? Like it records it for me in video on my right. interviews, right? And, but it's like, that was too much for me to take on. Like, I'm just like, I only have so much in my capacity because I have a thriving practice. I have kids that I'm raising. I'm newly married. We do, our first anniversary is today, actually, wow. you know? And so it's like, there's a lot going on and I can't afford to outsource 
right? So it's like, okay, I have to be okay with where I'm at until I can either learn these things or outsource these things. And so many people, again, that perfectionist of, oh, well, I have to do everything. I have to have um, a PR company and all this stuff. Yes, that stuff helps. 